due south-southwest from Hawaii lies Johnston Atoll, site of the United States Overseas Nuclear Test Facility. Within the reef, all test activity centers about the atoll's largest island, also named Johnston. Off the northeastern tip of Johnston is tiny, narrow-waisted Sand Island, home of a Coast Guard station, an astro-tracking facility, a 600-foot Loran Tower, and hordes of seabirds. Sand Island has minimum association with the atoll test facility. Two additional islets, which are related to testing, complete the atoll. Aka'u, or North Island, and Ikina, or East Island, approximately two miles distant from Johnston Island. The current buildup of the atoll test site by the Department of Defense and the Atomic Energy Commission, with much work still in progress, assures the United States a nuclear testing base, ready to go within 60 days. This was a safeguard measure exacted by Congress when it ratified the 1963 Limited Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. This safeguard stemmed from Russia's surprise nuclear test resumption two years earlier a cynical disregard of the test ban moratorium then being observed. In addition to a technological advantage achieved, the Russian surprise precipitated the United States into a costly, top priority eight month preparation period before the first nuclear device of the 1962 Dominic test series could be detonated. It is through the eyes of the veterans of the 1962 high altitude nuclear tests that the buildup of Johnston Atoll can be best appreciated. In those days, Aka'u and Ikina Islands were not in existence. Johnston Island itself was but a mile long, with the runway taking up one whole side of the island's length, except for a thin line of 30 rocket launch pads and a weather station on a stubby peninsula jutting south into the lagoon. On the main side of the airstrip was the hodgepodge of test, support, maintenance, and barracks buildings adapted from the existing structures or hastily set up for the high altitude tests, including the Thor launch complex. The Thor installation is still in place, utilized for other purposes. In 1962, this World War II underground bomb shelter served the DOD scientific readiness team directing the Dominic high altitude test effort. This shelter is now a well-equipped 20-bed hospital and dispensary. Today, Johnston Island is almost twice as long and twice as wide as in 1962. With the new land area formed with coral dredged from the lagoon during the process of scooping out deeper harbor and ship channels. This reclaimed coral also was used to create two new islands, Ikina, the atoll's transmitter station, and Aka'u, its receiver facility, a move in the continual effort to reduce the radio frequency interference which plagued the technicians and analysts in 1962. Although the Johnston facility is set up primarily for nuclear testing readiness, the Atoll's missile and rocket installations are currently available to other test agencies which may have a need for the operational and technical support plan. Also, the convenient location of Johnston Island on the air route to Southeast Asia is being utilized by the Military Airlift Command for the refueling of its cargo aircraft, a measure which increases the load capacity of each plane. The present 9,000-foot runway can be extended to 11,000 feet if operations so demand. It would then be capable of handling the longest runway requirements of large jet aircraft. A new aircraft parking and maintenance apron, large enough to accommodate 36 medium-sized planes, is now located on the new fill area south of the runway. 
Joint Task Force 8 is the host to all at all tenants, with coordination and logistical support responsibility for housing, messing, utilities, at all communications, and local water transportation. Here is a general rundown of the base support offered, beginning with living conditions. As in 1962, Johnston's sensitive mission, as well as its pint size, demands that its population be restricted to an all-male workforce. First, housing. Most enlisted or equivalent civilian grade personnel will be housed in six new four-story reinforced concrete barracks. These have dormitory type two-man cubicles with joint latrines on each floor. Other quarters are two three-story concrete block dormitories and two wood frame barracks. Part of the officer and scientist personnel will be housed in new four-story dormitories. These buildings are arranged with two bedrooms, each accessible from an outside balcony, connected by a latrine and closet area. In addition to the new buildings, 12 older buildings are also available. Messing is still carried on in mess hall number one, now enlarged to an 1,100-man seating capacity. Food at Johnston is plentiful, with traditional hefty helpings especially during Wednesday prime rib and Saturday steak nights. A new 600-man cafeteria-style mess hall designed to accommodate the large force of officer and scientist personnel required immediately following a test authorization is already in partial use as a mess facility. Also, one wing is utilized as the chapel, the other as a club. After work activities tend toward the usual physical and diversionary outlets common to a confined all-male population of varied ages and interests. Nine holes, par three. Not even a goonie bird for distraction. Eighteen holes for the leg weary. NCO club, presently undergoing renovation. A new club is planned for the near future. The new theater seats 1,000. A roof has been planned to permit all weather use. Until then, raincoats are standard equipment. All types of music and news. Also in the planning stage are handball courts, a bowling alley, and a skeet range. Since the atoll's small, flat, band areas have little to offer beyond a temperate climate, the men gravitate toward the water. Outboard motorboats, rafts, and deep sea fishing. Shark fishing is a favorite, even feverish sport in the lagoon waters. But the very abundance of sharks has had a dampening effect on swimming in the lagoon. The nearest beach area is at Waikiki, 700 miles northeast. At Johnston, this site was chosen for construction of a swimming pool, authorized in fiscal year 1966. Also, funds have been allotted to engineer the installation of an electronic fence to repel sharks from a proposed beach area. The base exchange, open to all, is new and sports both barbers and tailors. Here are the base installations to support test projects, beginning with shipping. The atoll's port facilities, considerably enlarged, are still centered on the northern side of Johnston Island. Cargo handling has greatly improved with the completion of a new wharf of 17,000 square feet and an adjacent cargo handling area of 45,000 square feet, formed from a coral backfilled base behind a sheet pile bulkhead. A small boat pier, as well as other small boat docking, catwalk, and finger piers, has been added. In the harbor area, 24 timber pile dolphins provide moorage near the wharves. For accommodation of large ships, a 32-foot deep water channel extends from the reef opening to Johnston Island, then through a mile-long turning basin adjacent to the deepened harbor area. From the harbor, 
a 17-foot deep channel proceeds to the West End's new bulkhead wharf, where explosives are unloaded, then continues to the south and opens into deeper water southwest of the island. Ikina and Aka'u Islands have also been equipped with bulkhead-type wharves, approached by eight-foot deep channels from Johnston Island. Warehouse space has been added, chiefly with 11 steel frame prefabricated buildings. Capacity now is almost 60,000 square feet of general storage space. An additional storage yard area of more than 100,000 square feet is also available, plus many uncovered areas. Storage buildings for such special purpose items as igniters, squibs and rocket motors, as well as radiation sample structures are also in place. A liquid oxygen generating plant is in operation on the northwest corner of the island's new land area. Utilities on the atoll are geared to supply a 5,000 man test operation. Except for emergency power, electricity for the three test islands is generated at one power plant on Johnston Island. Six diesel engine driven generators produce a total output of 8,250 kilowatts. All fresh water for the atoll, a daily 250,000 gallon capability based on a full test program, is produced on Johnston Island by saltwater distillation. Fresh water is stored in underground reservoirs. Where feasible, salt water is used for other than drinking and washing purposes. POL supplies petroleum, oil, and lubricants, including aviation jet fuel in bulk and ready storage tanks, are sufficient for more than a month of maximum test activity. The nerve center of the Johnston Atoll test site is embodied in the operational and technical support facilities. All testing is directed from the four-story JOC, as the Joint Operations Center is known built on the coral fill northeastern end of Johnston Island. The JOC building is a triumph of economy in money and land space, for it combines what was originally planned as four separate structures, housing administrative offices, technical facilities, and photo optical stations, as well as the operations control activities. The key to the four types of activity associated with the JOC building is the enclosure of the electronically sensitive JOC equipment within a concrete block central core area on all four floors. Included are the communications, control operations, and timing and firing areas. For maximum economy, much of the equipment will not be installed until nuclear testing is actually resumed. Separate test programs will be handled concurrently through two operations control centers, from which the military and scientific forces are directed during the tests. All control agencies will use a variety of the most advanced visual and auditory aids. Also within the core on the first floor is the utility section containing electrical switch gear and air conditioning equipment. Surrounding the core throughout the building are the necessary support installations, a central telephone exchange, other communication centers, screen rooms, as well as office and laboratory space. Photographic and optical stations are positioned on the JOC roof, providing separate camera and spectrograph rooms under rollback roofs. Hydraulic mechanisms permit fine tolerance adjustments in mounting and pre-alignment of cameras and spectrographs. Auxiliary air-conditioned control, calibration analysis, and developing rooms adjoin the roof stations. Other photo and optical stations are located in separate buildings on Johnston Island, each with its necessary supplementary space and equipment. Two platform stations at the east and west ends of the atoll will provide a photographic baseline for optical triangulation. 
Communication support for both the atoll's base and operational functions are funneled through the communication center on the JOC's second floor. The atoll's base telephone system consists of a 1,000 line automatic dial exchange with inter-island loop cable connections. Non-tactical FM VHF radios consisting of base stations and mobile and portable sets are utilized extensively. There are two ship-to-shore radio nets in use for control of marine craft. All off-atoll communication is handled by the Defense Communication System, which offers worldwide hookups. Long-haul DCS radio facilities have been stabilized by transferring the transmitting equipment to Ikina and the receiving apparatus to Akau. DCS radio equipment connecting the atoll to the outside consists of two 12 kilocycle single sideband radio trunks. This provides a trio of three KC voice and 16 teletype channels. Ionospheric sounders in duplex operation maximize performance. A coaxial submarine cable from Hawaii to the atoll terminating in the JOC and scheduled for operation in the spring of 1966, provides 60 four kilocycle channels for voice, teletype, or data transmission. The JOC's tactical control system provides real-time control between the JOC's several operation centers and critical atoll units, such as Weather Central and all rocket launch units. The JOC can be tied in with Air Force, Naval, and other communication systems by various radio sources and by secured teletype channels. Other communications media include TACAN, a low-frequency radio beacon, and the Sand Island Coast Guard LORAN. For efficient technical signal cable tie-ins, an island-wide reinforced concrete underground cable trough has been laid between the various operations areas and the command and control centers. Flexibility is provided by knockouts every five feet, complete with provisions for cable trays and racks. For communications and testing efficiency, the task force has set up a frequency management program for centralized control and analysis of radio frequency interference and electromagnetic radiation. To counter interference and other hazards, both existing and anticipated, electronic environments are charted and analyzed to establish sighting and safety criteria. Johnston Island's varied rocket and missile firing facilities, each group with its accompanying control and monitoring bunkers and systems, will have ample power, air conditioning, and RF shielding. Approximately 60 pre-flight rocket launch pads will be controlled from this concrete launch and monitoring bunker. Meteorological rocketry is conducted at this launch and tracking facility with concrete slabs for three orientation and tracking trailers. There are two control bunker and converter shelters like this. Each controls five 75-foot square Nike Hercules launch pads. Three feet of earth fill cover a three foot thick reinforced concrete roof for safety from HE explosions and or protection from debris. Under construction is a complete Slim John rocket installation with a 40 foot square launch pad and a building containing a high bay assembly and checkout area. Other clusters of pads are controlled by Sandia Command and Tracking Station J3200, consisting of three earth covered steel bunkers equipped with steel blast doors and escape chutes. Primary tracking is handled by two Teltrack antennas. This angle and distance measuring equipment field is used for tracking instrumented rockets. The field's 17 slaved antennas are patterned within a 1,000 foot cleared area. 